Here we'll be going over 9.3 map 2. Uh, this is the right triangle similarity theorem. So let's break down what this thing is and where we see it and how it's useful. Uh, so, first things first, there's a big triangle on the outside A, B, C, and then the line in the inside C, D is what we call the altitude. The altitude is also known as the height. So, it goes from the bottom straight up, so it makes a 90 degree angle right there, and then um, that is called the altitude. So when you draw on the altitude, you actually have created three triangles now. You have the two inner ones and the big outer one, and it turns out they're all similar. Okay, that in itself, you might you might trust me that it's true. The problem with it is they're similar, but they're not facing the same way. So what I mean is, uh, we need to line them up so we know that angle B, which angle one does that match up with? Which uh, so in this triangle we have B C D. Over here we have A C D. And then the bigger triangle is A, B, C. And we want to try and keep all of those straight. So we're going to do that with an index card. So if you have a 3 by 5 index card, or pretty much any piece of rectangular paper will work. Uh, take a second, grab one, and we'll continue. All right, students, you should now have a rectangle in front of you. Uh, again, an index card works perfectly, but any size rectangle will work. Next thing you need to do is draw the diagonal. Either diagonal will work. There you go. Go ahead and use a ruler. Make sure it's straight. Once you've made it straight, next thing you're going to want to do is take some scissors and cut it. You should now have two congruent triangles, two equal halves. Now, this side matches perfectly on top of that side. All right. That's not actually what the, tra the theorem says, um, but we needed that to start us with. So now we got two of them. You can take one of them, put them to the side for right now. We won't use that. And let's take a look at this one. We're going to label this first. Now I'm going to go back to the book for a second here because I want to make sure it faces the correct way. So they had theirs facing that way. It's A over here, B in this corner, and C up top. So for theirs, the C is the right angle. All right, so let me zoom out. Again, we're just copying the one from 9.3 in the text. So that's our outer triangle. And again, we should have our other triangle that matches right on top of that. All right. So let's go ahead and draw our other triangle. What we're going to do is draw that altitude. All right. Again, the altitude goes straight from the top, straight down at a 90 degree to the bottom. And so there it is. All right. There's our triangle. So a couple things we need to label here. We have two triangles. I only have the altitude drawn on this one. But what I want to do is want to label things here. This would have been A. This would be B. Up here is C, and we have two sides here. I'm going to label it on both sides, and you'll see why in a second. And then down here is D, and we're going to label both sides of that in a second. Why? Because right now what I'm going to ask you to do is take your scissors and cut along that diagonal. We now get to where we were after in the first place. We have the outer triangle, and we have two smaller inside triangles. So this theorem gives us three triangles, and they're all similar. Okay, so make sure you have them labeled like mine, and then we're going to rotate them. Okay, Here's the key to making sure it matches what we had in the book. We need them all to face the same way, and right now they're not all facing the same way. Okay, Why is that important? Well, we need them to face the same direction so we know which parts are congruent. So let's zoom out here. So what do I mean by face the same way? Well, this is the right angle, so we need to compare right angles to right angles. So right now I have the right angle at the top here, but this one has it at the bottom, and this one has it on the bottom on the uh, left side. This is bottom on the right, bottom on the left. Let's get them all facing the same way. So we can rotate this one this way, okay? Or we can try and uh, flip one of them over. We're not going to be able to get them going the same way. You'll see this right now. This one will not face the same way. So what we need to do, we're going to flip it over, and that's totally okay as long as I remember. This was A. When I flip it over... A is now over here. The right angle is C, so it's C over here. The top angle is B, and let's label that. Okay. Again, it's the same triangle as before, just flip flop. All right, what was the point of all that? Well, now we have them all the same, we can compare them all the same. Here's the statement we can make. 
Starting with the big triangle, A, B, C, makes sense to go in that order, A, B, C. So A and then the top and then the 90 degree angle. For this one, it would then go A, C, D. This one first, then the top, then the right angle. And then this one, C, B, D. And again, it's very hard for me to know the order of all these without just randomly guessing. Okay, because these ones are more A, B, C. This is an order ACD, but this is random CBD. It's sort of backwards, but it's not random because it's basically corresponding angles. This little angle here matches up with this little angle here, matches up with this little angle here. So those are all three similar triangles. And again, it works for any rectangle. Go through the diagonal. This will always end up being the case. That's why it's a theorem. That's why it's powerful. <coughs> so now you know. Thanks for watching, guys.